Organizing classes at our school, it's a formal process. You know, you, there's a, again, a piece of paper and you say, look, I'm interested in learning this subject and I want to see if anyone else is interested in learning this subject. And so you might find a couple of other students who, yeah, sure, I want to learn about arithmetic, I want to learn arts and crafts, I want to learn how to cook, whatever. And you can go about and organize a class. Uh, you can find a staff member, for example, who might have some expertise, or maybe a student who has expertise in the subject. Or maybe you'd have to find somebody outside of the school who has a particular expertise. But then you go ahead and organize a class. In general, that's not what people spend uh, a significant amount of their time uh, doing. Uh, I went to, I think, about one class a day uh, when I was at Sudbury Valley. It was a history lecture that one of the staff members was giving on a regular basis. And, you know, there will be other groups that, you know, really anyone might choose to organize for any purpose. And uh, even when there are classes, they usually, in fact, rarely are, take the form of a traditional class with, you know, certain... It's myself, I'm going to shut that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, they rarely take the form of a traditional class with, uh, you know, tests and, and grades. I would say they never do like that, but, you know, they might... There might be one person who's giving a lecture and other people might ask questions or it just might be an informal discussion. At our school, I would say that classes have not been a big part of the school. Uh, this past year we had, I would say, I would say we probably had like maybe four or five classes that met pretty regularly. Uh, not for the whole school year, but for certain lengths of time during the school year. And uh, at our school, that's a pretty new thing. I think that our kids and our community is really into informal learning in a big way. And, uh, and so have always really done things informally, either you know, as an individual learner or maybe with their friends or maybe one-on-one -on -one with a staff member. Uh, and so, you know, like in this upcoming school year, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll have more classes than we had last year. I mean, maybe classes are part of the... Uh, you know, part of the development of Sudbury schools. It's, you know, maybe a particular component of that. Uh, you know, it may be, for example, that you walk into a different Sudbury school and they have classes all the time. And that's just what that school has decided on. You know, that's the way that they want to go about learning things or that's the way the kids want to go about learning things. And so they organize a whole bunch of classes and maybe kids are in classes all the time. Well, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does, it does happen. Um, <laughs> There's one girl who, it's one-on-one -on -one most of the time. We have a pottery class that, um, it's our staff members doing it, and then um, math, like with money, and then we have art classes. But the staff members are doing it, because that's what they like to do. <laughs> I think it's important for the, the kids to understand, or to know, that uh, classes are a possibility. A lot of our kids come from uh, public schools, traditional schools, and so they, of course, are always in classes. You know that their whole day is classes, and so they come to a school like ours, for example, and they're excited because they don't have to go to classes. You know, it's like, oh well, I was at the school where I went to classes all the time and I hated it, and now I come to a school where I don't have to go to classes at all, so I'm not going to go to class. And that's, you know, that's what a kid decides to do. That's fine, but at least they know, you know even if there are no classes around, that they can go ahead and organize a class that they want. And I think it's a very important, uh, it's important feeling for them, or it's a good motivation for them. You know, they know that if I'm really serious about something, if I really want to learn about math, if I really want to learn about, uh, you know, woodworking, for example, then I can do this on my own. You know, and I think that's a very important thing for people to, to know about. Uh, you know, rather than just following everyone else, I can do what I want to do. And if I want to organize a class, I can organize a class. And if I can get some people to join the class, then that's great. And if I can get a staff member to help out, that's great too. I know that I went through a phase of me thinking that I needed to know math. And um, I did that for a little while, but then I didn't see any point. It was just one-on-one, -on -one, me and a staff member. And I just didn't see any point. Yeah, so, oh, I don't, it does not happen that much at, at my school, it, it does happen, but not heaps. I think that 
uh, perhaps the the hope, or yeah, the hope at a Sudbury school, or the ideal at a Sudbury school, is that the kids, 100% of the time, are going to initiate classes. They're going to say, you know, this individual student or this group of students is going to say, oh yeah, let's, I want to learn this subject, so I'm going to organize a class. This year, my daughter initiated two classes, which meant she posted sign-ups, she saw if students were interested, and, and, and arranged, in one case she arranged for a staff member to teach it, in another case she arranged for a musician that, that plays music at our church to come in and teach guitar. And when I see that, I thought, gee, you know, I can't imagine her doing anything like that when she went to public school. You know, sometimes what happens is there'll be a conversation at the school about some subject, you know over lunch or you know after a meeting or outside on the playground or whatever and the sub the conversation will be about you know a particular subject and maybe out of that conversation you know maybe a staff member was part of that conversation for example maybe uh, out of that conversation the that dynamic will create a class now yeah you may look at that situation and say well it's not really the kid you know, the staff member had a, something to do with it. And I would say, well, yeah, I mean, there was a conversation between a student and a staff member or a group of students and a staff member or staff members and a student or whatever. And out of that dynamic came a class. Well, it goes in waves. I mean, this, this year we had a lot of people doing classes, so I ended up spending probably almost half my, well, maybe a third of my time teaching classes. Um, but I was teaching probably more than anybody else. Yeah. So, um, so other people maybe. What, what do you think would be typical? Twenty percent of your time? Maybe. Yeah, that was close to what I was spending, I suppose. Yeah, and it depends what you define as a class, too. I mean, or what you define as teaching. You know, there, there, there are formally arranged teaching situations that that a student has come to you and said, "I'd like to learn whatever it is." I'd like to learn history, and then you go and you sit down and you, and you do a history class. But then there are also um, situations where I'm working on the computer and a five-year-old climbs on my lap and says, I know how to read, and I say, oh yeah, and she says, yeah, that word says the, and, and then, you know, and, or that word says cat, and then I'll say, oh yeah, that's true, do you know what this word is? And I'll point to another one, and, you know, we'll have a little conversation about reading, and she'll learn a little bit more about words, you know, the sounds of letters, and then she'll get bored and she'll hop off my lap and go away. And did we just have a reading class? I don't know. <laughs> you know we, I certainly, you know, she learned something, I showed her some things, but it wasn't a formal class arrangement. I actually think that that happens a lot more than, um, than the formal classes do, and it is such an organic thing being at the school that, um, you know, you can be anywhere and it can turn into one of those teaching or learning learning moments because that's so much of what we're doing and some of it is happening through just through conversation and some of it is happening when, you know, I'm in the art room and somebody says, I'm going to use this saw and they've never used a saw before so we better have a teaching moment there. You know, people who join our school are not so concerned about there being lots of classes around, you know. They like the idea that you can start classes, you can form them, and they can go for one week or one month or one year or three years or for however long the students and staff members are interested in it. Uh, or the students and the teachers, whoever the teachers are, they may be staff members, they may be other people. Again, because people are equating classes with learning. They say, oh, classes means students that students learn. And if students don't go to class, they don't learn. And I mentioned that you know, in our school, informal learning has been around, has been the majority of learning, the majority of learning experiences at our school. And again, if you're willing to accept that informal learning is also learning, it has the same kind of value as sitting in a classroom and learning something, uh, then at a Sudbury school, you'll be, the student will be okay and the family will be okay with what's going on.